To me, Global Reach Out is inspiring. It's connecting with God, reaching out to the world, and impacting life. The stories that I shared is so personal and it deeply impacted me. Global Reach Out to me is reach out to the truth. Connecting hearts, connecting lives. You're listening to Global Reach Out. We continue learning about work-life balance. Number 10. Hello, I'm Elaine Kung. Blessings from California and United States. Today, we continue with effective time management through these six S. We're going to learn more how to seek to do the right things in the right way so that we're effective and also efficient. Remember, time is such a gift from God. And also, it's God's grace for us. Even though we may not deserve it, we are blessed with time. What a gift. And Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 to 17 remind us, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is so that we want to make sure we make good use of every opportunity, including the decision when we should do, right? Sometimes our response may be, oh, now, because it's urgent and important. Oh, maybe in the future or one day or later, or maybe never, or maybe next week. And sometimes we are sure, sometimes we may not be sure. So we need to think about the timing. And to be honest, the most important word in time management, what is it? It's no. We need to learn how to say no and set boundary on things that do not align to our priority, on things that we don't need to fill and put into our jar of life. Remember, we use this example, analogy. Our life is like a jar. And what do you put in it? There are things that are not aligned to our priority. Don't put them in our jar and we say no and set boundary. So again, from Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. We already covered before, begin with the end in mind, know what the goals are. We also talked about be proactive so that we are investing time on quadrant two, important and when it's not urgent, that we're proactive. And now we're gonna talk about number three, put first things first. If it's important and it's first thing, let's put in the priority. And we call them big rocks, right? In your life container, your big rocks are those important and valuable things. And you put those first so that you have enough space in your life jar for the big rocks. And then for the things that you may not enjoy doing, we call them frogs. We don't enjoy eating frogs. So there's a book named Eat That Frog. So let's learn some not so pleasant things, and yet they're important. Put them into my schedule and do those first. So when I'm alert, uh, allocate a time so that they align to my goal and I don't procrastinate on them. Our big rocks that are first thing and priority for us. Based on planning, every day we have a to-do list. Early in the morning, we can plan out what to do today. And then every week could be last few hours on a Friday for next week because the memory is fresh for what happened this week. And now I remember after the weekend, when I come back on Monday, then I would do those. And then at the end of each month, I can also plan what to do next month. And then we have long-term lists. So these are very good ideas to help plan first thing first. Another tool I want to give you is how to aim for the best time management principles. B-E-S-T. Best effort and conscious planning. Based on what you know, it's important to you, for example, Monday through Friday, daytime is when you give your best effort to do a good job at work so that you're not distracted to do something else. Don't do vacation planning during Monday through Friday uh, during your daytime. Right? You do those in the weekend or at night. And then your best effort in the evening is to give your wholehearted 
Focus attention to your family at night. Spend time with your family for dinner so that it's quality family time. Also set up one-on-one -on -one time with your spouse, with each one of your children. So that's all best effort conscious planning on what's important to you for what day of the week and what hour of the day. And then the weekend and Friday night, it's fellowship. That's when I make the best effort to enjoy the fellowship and best effort for family time on Saturday and go take a day trip or together as a family cleaning up the house. It's a privilege to serve one another. And it's one task, multiple blessings, multiple benefit that we build relationship and it's best effort and focus on it. And then Sunday is when we worship, when we serve or teach Sunday school. So focus on the best effort based on the rhythm and the routine you have. So don't get distracted. When you're in the weekday, don't keep thinking just about the weekend. So you really enjoy the moment and live in the moment. E, empathy. So how you spend your time. Save your limited time of 10 minutes, say with your child, one-on-one. -on -one. How you spend that 10 minute quality time with them. You want to have good empathy to communicate and cooperate with each other. Same thing at work. I have 30 minutes one-on-one -on -one time with my subordinates. How can I exercise empathy in my communication and relationship building? So the same amount of time you may spend, if you are smart with empathy, then your 30 minutes can generate good positive relationship. The same 30 minutes if you don't have empathy and you've been very cold, not relating on how they feel, then your 30 minutes is wasted and even perhaps negative result. So having empathy is to name how the person feel. Wow, this must be so difficult. Wow, you must be disappointed not getting that award that you are hoping to get. So think of how they feel, even though you may not agree with them, and yet you still can name that feeling, feel how they feel. In English, the three pathy. Apathy, I don't care how you feel. We don't want to do that. Not good. Sympathy, oh, I feel sorry for how you feel. That's not good enough either. We want empathy. I feel how you feel. So that way, the limited time you spend with the coworkers, you are smart and effective in communication and cooperation and building good relationship, empathy. S, stick to priority with focus, right? Stick to your routine, stick to your goal and align the priority toward your goal and be focused on it and not get distracted. So we already learned many different techniques, how to get focused, turn off your phone, put away your electronic devices, close the door, block out time on your calendar so that you have focused time and not get distracted. T, time of relaxation and well-being. So important to get recharged, renewed and refreshed so we relax. We'll come back to the relax in the future. We have a more in-depth, how do we relax? And that give ourselves a better self, really much better well-being. We have the best, and how do we aim for the best? Here's another tool to help us to do A-I-M in managing our time. A is accountability. Remember, we learned the L-A-P, list, allocate, and prioritize. So you list out your activity on how your time is spent and be accountable, and then know the difference between what's urgent and important and be sure not to do what's not important. And then put in a practice, make it very realistic in doing this list, allocate and prioritize. So be accountable on these good tools. Then I is to actually implement them, to actually do it, have an action plan, set the goals, the priorities, so you can increase your efficiency, your productivity and your effectiveness. And manage our life with this yes tool, Y-E-S, and we'll go into that next. That's managing yourself, 
how to execute well in your time, and how to have good self-care. And finally, motivation. When we can aim for the best, we're motivated, we're driven. So what gives us the motivation? And remember, success is an iceberg. Where you have a tip of an iceberg, you see all that's on top above the water level. Oh, very glamorous, glorious success. And yet underneath the water level is the big iceberg, all the hard work, the failures, and you learn the mistakes and you fell forward. Uh, discipline of time management and your perseverance. So those are part of our motivation. And remember the three partners in our life, right? Yesterday, we want to learn from and build on what we learned instead of regretting. And today, instead of complaining, we want to manage them proactively. And then tomorrow, we want to be proactive in planning so that we don't have to worry, wondering what's going to happen. So we'll lead a life without regrets. And that's our motivation because we want to be fulfilling, have an integrated life, and it's a balanced life. And then every day, it's a full life, and every day, it's a gift. And that really helped us to hit the target, the bullseye, and aim for the best practice that we learned. So what's the YES tool? And we'll discuss more the next time also. Y-E-S is you. Ultimately, we need to manage ourselves the best. Make sure we have good self-discipline and self-control. Know what's needed, we must do. Know what's wanted or desirable, so we may not always do those, so we've distinguished them. And then be very committed to clear goals, the smart goals, and the priority. So that's how we manage ourselves, not just managing the time, it's really managing ourselves. Because time is always there, 24 hours, is how we execute. And that leads us to E, execute the time. Remember, the quadrant two is where we want to spend most of our time, important but not urgent. That's when we are revived and refreshed and we want to spend 65 to 80% of our time. That's quadrant two. And finally, self-care. S is for self-care. And that's the boat mark. And we'll go into in detail next time how to take good care of ourselves so I can take care of others, people, and things. And finally, to improve our efficiency, here are some good leadership tips so that we can get things done with focus and avoid perfectionism, avoid procrastination, and also make sure that we update the way we work and always take action, walk the talk, and set realistic expectation, and also set time limits. So here are some more tips to really improve our efficiency. In the morning, I start the day reading the Bible in a quiet time. Eat healthy. I'll show you pictures next time with a big smoothie every day, protein and cut down sugar and fat, good rest, relax and exercise, all these healthy habits. These are all quadrant two, important, but not urgent. And yet we need to do those. Good emotion, take care of our own body, our mind and our spirit, self-esteem. Goal setting and then plan it out, align to our priority. Remember to schedule difficult tasks for the most efficient time. When you have clear mind, some difficult tasks, remember to eat the frog first. Let me get it done first. Oh, wow. After I get it done, I feel so accomplished. Then the rest of the easier tasks will be less challenging and we'll be more motivated to get those done. Multitask or focused. Some things you may multitask, it's not as important. Some things we want to focus, so you have a good way to optimize your time. And then some tools like personal management tools, software, calendar, are good skills to use and reflect at the end of the day. Oh, how did our day go? Wow, we got so much done and we get more motivated. And then sometimes, once in a while, take a full day break and a retreat just meditate and reflect and reveal. And that really helps us to do the right things in the right way. See you next time.
The program is proudly presented by Global Reach Out. We welcome you to share our live enriching webcasts with family and friends through our website, global-reachout.org. Let's reach out to bless more lives together.